Welcome to Journey Through Lent. Today we look at the Gospel of John, chapters 9 and 10. By this point in his ministry, Jesus is well known for being surrounded by extraordinary happenings. People are increasingly asking him, who are you? Now one of the drawbacks of the written word is that it doesn't convey the vocal emphases of that question, which could be said in many different ways. We can imagine a Roman centurion seeing Jesus approach might address him dismissively. Oh yeah, and who are you? Disciples gazing into Jesus' eyes after witnessing him perform a miracle might ask wondering, who are you, Lord? And the Pharisees, bristling with indignation, might say, just who are you to say that? It's the same question, but the different phrasing betrays people's hopes and fears, or indifference, about who Jesus might be. He arouses strong emotions in people, loyalty in some, outrage in others. Yet then, as today, many people were just unable to make up their minds about him. And yet, this is the single most important question that we all have to answer. Just who do we say Jesus is? C.S. Lewis wrote that Jesus didn't come to earth to give us easy options. He did too many extraordinary, even outrageous things to let us get away with dismissing him as merely a well-intentioned human teacher. Lewis maintains that reading these accounts in the Bible, we are left with only three options to explain them. Jesus was mad. Jesus was a liar or Jesus was, and is, who he said he was. We see all three of these reactions in the passage in John 9 to 10. In chapter 9, Jesus heals a man blind from birth. The teachers of the law react to this by calling him a liar and a sinner in 9.24, and call him demon-possessed and mad, 10.20. And when he answers their demand to say who he is, in 10.30, they pick up stones to kill him. So, who exactly did Jesus claim to be? It's very easy to read the stories of Jesus and somehow miss the immensity of his claims. In John 8.24 he says, Before Abraham was, I am. In John 10.30 he says, The Father and I are one. This latter claim was certainly not lost on the people who were there. They replied, We are stoning you, not for any good work, but for blasphemy. You, a mere man, claim to be God. So when we are challenged to say why we think Jesus was not a mere man, but was both fully man and fully God, quote the words of Jesus himself in John 10.30. The Father and I are one. This is the clearest, most unequivocal statement that Jesus made about his own divinity. I've worked with many people of different faiths and belief systems. There is a great deal of common ground. Yet there is one issue that separates Christians from all others. It revolves around the claim of Jesus in John 10.30. Others may dismiss him as being mad or accuse him of being a liar. Christians can accept with confidence the words of Christ himself, the Father and I are one. 